so I got early access to the new Total War DLC and Lu Bu is now his own faction. He's got probably the most crazy start out of any faction I've seen in Three Kingdoms yet and this first battle is really not a big deal. We have to take out Zai Hu Dun and kill him for his weapon. Though this battle is not difficult by any means, we don't want to take any casualties nor do we want Lu Bu to take any damage as the next battle is extremely hard. Chen Gong gave us the ability to fight night battles as well as our archers do have flaming arrows and we're at a really good spot right now because we're not in trees and the enemy is going to have to charge us through trees. So we're going to unleash a flaming arrow volley on these spear guards and their morale is already really low because we're fighting a night battle but after a few volleys of flaming arrows they should probably run. And it's funny they're charging way in front of Zaihu Dun. I'm not really sure why they're doing that. If we get Lu Bu close to them he scares whatever's around him and yeah these guys are flashing now. Their morale's down to seven. We just need to get their morale down to zero and they'll run. Maybe we'll toss some call traps on them. We'll send Lu Bu in there and we'll have them do... Okay, we don't even have to have them do rage. They're already running. Now we just gotta take on Zaihu Dun. We'll let our G infantry surround him, and then we'll just try to spear him with Lu Bu and run away. And our strategist actually lowers his armor by 20% if he's near him. We also have some zillion cavalry that we can send in and we'll have them charge them too. And yeah, we'll just charge again with Lu Bu. Not staying in there for very long because we don't want to actually engage this guy. We don't want to give him time to retaliate at all against Lu Bu. We just want to poke him and run. And there we go, we knocked him out. As far as our casualties, Lu Bu did lose a sliver of HP and so did our strategist. But the main thing is we only lost 18 G infantry and that's it. We did end up capturing Zai Hu Dun and he will not join us so we're going to execute him for his heirloom spear. And playing as Lu Bu, we have this ability to maintain momentum which makes it so we can reset the army's movement points to max. It's just that if we fight again this turn, we're going to be tired in battle which gives our units penalties like they're slower or they're worse at combat. We're still going to do it though. After doing that, you'll notice that Cao Cao has two generals on the right of Chen, as well as three on the left. And now we gotta save the city. To save the city, we're gonna drop Gao Shun into it. And if we put Gao Shun in the city and we march back with Lu Bu, which ordinarily marching in a situation like this could be bad, as after our turn, if we got attacked and we had marched, we again would be really tired and that would be bad. However, if we march and Gao Shun's already in the city, we can transfer these guys into Gao Shun's army. And voila, we are no longer marching. And with that, we will now end our turn. And yeah, Cao Cao is now going to siege us with both of his armies. In order to break this siege, we have to attack Cao Cao. We can't attack this guy, which we'd rather actually attack Dian Wei because his army's stronger. And it's not looking good for us. If we attack Cao Cao, Dian Wei will reinforce him and advisors predict a decisive defeat. However, we can fight this as a night battle because Chen Gong already has that upgrade. And so now Dian Wei cannot reinforce Cao Cao because night battles are extremely OP. And now it's Lu Bu's army and Chen's garrison against Cao Cao. And our advisors do predict a decisive victory. We dropped some caltrops in front of these leopard cavalry and we've already killed a few of them, which is great. The goal of this battle again is we want to take as few casualties as possible. It's not gonna be a hard battle for us to win. Again, it's just we need to be really strong for the next battle. And we're already taking out these tiger and leopard cavalry. We're having Lu Bu and Gao Shun double team them. And yeah, they're already running, which is great. We'll now move to these other heavy tiger and leopard cavalry and we'll have Lu Bu use a Lu Bu smash on them. Um, and we'll also use Roar of the Beast that will scare everything that's nearby. Lu Bu is kind of in a bad position here. We want to get him out of there and not let him get dismounted. And one of their generals is actually running. We're now gonna have all of our units just start charging and oh yeah a lot of these guys are actually running. I think once Roar runs off they will turn around but we're just gonna surround Cao Cao with everyone and we're actually destroying him. Pretty sure Lu Bu said destroy him right when I said that. We're not even kiting here either because we have too many units here. There's no way Cao Cao can really do much. And yeah, Cao Cao is now down. And here comes Yu Jin back in. I don't know what made him run so quickly because his HP is pretty much full and he ran. And yeah, big hit on Yu Jin from, I guess that was Lu Bu probably. And oh, here comes some more Tiger and Leopard Cavalry. They're about to run though yet again. These guys are running too. And these archers are all out of ammo, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. They are running and GG. That's not going to be it though. We're going to chase everyone down if we can. We really want to chase this general down and kill him because units that we don't kill here we're gonna have to kill another battle. It's much better to kill them while they're running because we're not taking any damage. Can we catch up to this general? Looks like we're able to. I think you get much less speed while you're retreating because this guy's been running for a while and we were able to catch up to him. Then again Lu Bu does have his red hair and he's moving at 90 speed now with it and yeah we killed him. I think they buffed the red hair because previously I only remember it being 80 speed and I'd say we played that pretty well. 
We ended up capturing Yu Jin as well, and he will not join us. So we're gonna execute him for his military Jian. And here we're just gonna ransom his troops. We're not gonna maintain momentum. We didn't actually lose any movement points from attacking that general there because we didn't even have to move. He was sieging our city. And so yeah, we're gonna attack Dian Wei now. And we're actually doing really well here. In my practice run, I think I had like 900 units. Lu Bu's also at full HP too, which is really nice. And Gao Shun's almost at full HP. It says our forces are evenly matched, but our advisors do still predict we lose. One thing I have noticed though is the advisors never take into account Lubu's strength or they would have said like decisive victory there. I'm sure we can pull a decisive victory here off of this. Are we going to? Probably not, but it's definitely possible. The enemy has trebuchets, so they're not going to charge us, at least not right away. And ooh, that first volley actually hit two of our lancers. That's unlucky because they are in loose formation and they're moving. But yeah, we just want to kind of try to draw out their trebuchet fire with these lancers and eventually these guys should charge us. And yeah, there we go. Another volley that completely missed. And here comes their strategist. Is he going to try to fight? He could probably kill their strategist, actually. Just with these lancers, like, I don't know why they're trying to fight us with their strategist. Yeah, we're actually doing damage to him already. Like, why would they send out their strategist? It makes no sense. Is he going to run already? Okay, this did not happen in the practice run. He's only killed one of our lancers, and now he's running. Yeah, nice trash talk, dude. You're running. The fact that this guy's running already is going to hurt their morale, too. Like, that is so funny. Well, we're just gonna have our lancers chase this guy down and <laughs> we actually killed him. They were no match. Okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, he's being kind of funny here. Like they're sending in, okay, here we go. Another general's coming in and then they're sending in one set of spear guards and one archer militia. I don't really know what their thought process is here. And here we go, another volley of trebuchets missing. Those are flaming shots too, which are pretty terrifying. If our units were clumped up, those would be doing tons of damage to us. But as it is, we've only lost a couple mounted lancers off of their trebuchets. I'm gonna have these mounted lancers go all the way around and I'm gonna see if we can get them into the trebuchet line. These archers are kind of seeing that we're up to something though. They're going to try to cut them off, but maybe they won't be able to. And I'm just going to have these guys do one final thing for us, the which is take out these trebuchets. What and cowards. wait, these guys are already fleeing these G militia. They're just sending in G militia like by themselves. I don't know why they're doing that. These ones too, like they're already fleeing. <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. Yep, they're already running away. The rest of their units are just sitting back there like I actually did not know that the AI was this dumb. They weren't on my first run I swear. I don't know why they feel like they need to just sacrifice these mounted lancers now too. They're just running into our archers. And yeah these spear guards are not braced unfortunately so we took extra damage there. I still don't completely understand the brace mechanic but basically if spear guards are not moving for I think it's like four seconds they'll become braced and then if they get charged by lancers for example they'll reflect the damage. I don't know what this guy Dian is doing either. He's just sitting right in front of our tower and he's like kind of taunting us. We're gonna have our generals charge him. He's got lower armor right now by a little bit and that charge did not do much. We got 3v1 on him though, and here comes their other units, we're gonna back off. They sent in one more general, and they sent in a mounted lancer militia group, but we're just gonna send in our zillion cavalry, and our generals, and we should be able to overwhelm these generals. And yeah, these mounted lancers are running. We are taking some damage here, but it's bound to happen. Dian Wee is kind of a beast too. This general is actually about to go down. He's... yeah, he's dead. Okay, let's back off, and let's regroup here. Or we can just kill this guy. I just don't want to get anywhere near these spear guards with our cavalry. We're just continually mobbing Dian Wei, and Lu Bu is not taking any damage yet. I don't think at all this battle. Maybe like a little bit, but not much. And Dian Wei is really low. Is he down? Yeah, I think he's down. Well, that was easy. And wow, these axe bands are already fleeing. That's partly due to the fact that they have no generals that are up anymore. And oh, I forgot about these trebuchets in the back. We'll have Gao Shun go over there and run down these trebuchets. We don't want them to be firing into our units, but they won't fire into our general, so we'll just have them run them down. And oh yeah. Oh, that hurts. Meanwhile over here, Gao Shun got into their trebuchet line, scared them, and yeah, they're now running. He's got an ability that is like an AoE fear, and they lose morale. Oh, and okay, never mind. I was about to say, we gotta finish off all these other units over here. They got 92 archers left, 106 over here, which Lubu just smashed them. They're down to 84, but they all just decided to run. And after chasing down the rest of their units, we did pull a close victory, not decisive. But that's all right. We did get 1156 and we captured both of them. Dian Wei will not join us. What? Okay, what if we employ Zun Yu first? No, dude, on my practice run, he joined us. Why is this happening? Maybe we have to do this run over again or... 
Okay, I'm gonna try to replay that battle. Well, I will say that attempt was much worse. We lost a lot of HP on Gaoshun, and Chen Gong actually got knocked out. And wait, we didn't capture anyone there? <laughs> no, I hate this. Okay, third attempt, which was extremely sloppy. We did capture both of them, and dude, I guess I just gotta redo the run. Like, I don't know what I did wrong here. Or maybe I'll try to do it without killing their sentinel. I killed him in both the attempts where this guy will not join us. Maybe that like pissed him off, even though it's not saying that guy was his friend or anything. Okay, well this time we did not kill their sentinel. Let's see if he'll join us this time. Nope, I don't. Oh, okay, the other guy won't even join us either, but the Sentinel will join us. Hey, we don't care about him though. I guess new run, which is okay. Like I wasn't completely happy with the items we got there. I started with a bow and I gave it to our strategist, but I noticed he couldn't use it. I don't know what that was all about. Okay, so what we're gonna do differently here is this battle against Cao Cao. We're gonna kill Cao Cao, but we're not gonna kill Yu Jin. Oh, we actually captured Cao Cao's weapon. Cao Cao's weapon is interesting. It's really fast. It lowers instinct though and gives authority. It's really a weird weapon. Wait, why is this turn three? Like I skipped a turn apparently. <laughs> No, what's going on? I'm gonna fight this anyways though, and yeah, we only have 835 units. In the first attempt, I think we had like above 1k. I did only one attempt on that run and didn't end up capturing Dian Wee and just abandoned it, even though we did capture Cao Cao's weapon. Since I messed up and I guess I missed the turn, I just decided it wasn't worth it to pursue the run. So I ended up just kind of giving up, trying to figure out a way to capture Dian Wee when I went back to the practice run where I did end up capturing him. And I noticed that under his relations tab, he does not like Cao Cao because he's maimed. Dian Wee is unsympathetic to the weak and on this run since we did maim Cao Cao which there's just a chance to do that when you knock someone out. I think that combined with I guess on this run we did not kill Zaihu Dun who Dian Wee does apparently like. It may have been either of those events or both of those combined was the reason why Dian Wee joined us because there's not a chance for the dialogue to pop up if they'll join you or not as far as I know. It's just that if they like your faction they will join you and if they like their faction they won't join you. Maim Cao Cao, don't kill Zaihu Dun and this guy will join. That's all I got for you guys today. If you would like to see me pursue a run with Dian Wee is now on our team, Zunyu is as well, drop a like on the video. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.